Hello and welcome to my trips and tips video on the Song of the Elves gauntlet. For this video I'm going to assume you know the basic mechanics of the gauntlet, in which case I'll provide some quick tips on how to decrease your time in the prep stage and the boss fight. In the normal version of the gauntlet you have 10 minutes to prepare yourself for the boss fight, but I'm going to show you how you can prep in around 5-4 to four minutes. Obviously your prep time does depend on some RNG, but that kind of goes without saying, so let's begin. You're going to want to create a mental checklist for yourself, as when you go around the gauntlet every room is randomised, so there is no fixed pattern in which order you'll find the resources. With this in mind you should aim to collect 6 fishing spots which equals 24 fish, 2 herbs to make 2 restore potions, at least 2 weapon frames, although you can use 3 if you want to use a method that I'll show later. On top of this you'll need 3 of each basic resource, that is ore, wood and wool. You'll be using this to create your armour later. We're only gathering three of each because we're only going to make T1 gear. This is because T2 and T3 armour have diminishing defensive returns for their cost and resources, making them not worth your time to craft. I'll put a table on screen which details this further. Since you're on the clock, pathing becomes incredibly important, so we should be looking for the most efficient line all the time whilst inside. To my understanding, the most important part of having a fast run is finding a T3 bow and being able to utilise that within the boss fight. With this in mind, it should be our goal to reach the outer layer of the gauntlet as fast as possible so we have the highest chance of finding a dark beast. We can gather the other resources we need on the way. If you look at the graphic I've created, you'll see that the dragon, dark beast and bear tend to spawn on the outer ring, and not within the green box. This means we should beeline out to the outer ring in order for us to find our T3 weapons. On your first trip out to the outer layer, you want to prioritise getting a weapon frame and two herbs, as well as any ore, wood or wool veins that you might find along the way, but these are less important. As you can see by the graphic, the most efficient pattern to open the most amount of rooms would be to stay on the second layer and only open the door which is in front of you and the door to the outer layer. We do this because we want to see if there's a monster there which will drop a T3 weapon piece. If there's not, then we'll just carry on going unless there's anything in the room you might need. I feel like the graphic explains it a little bit better, so have a look at that and you'll see what I mean. I'm sure you all know which beasts drop the T3 weapon pieces, but just for clarification I'll go over that once more. The bear drops the melee T3 piece, and the dark beast drops the ranged T3 piece. Finally, the dragon drops the mage T3 piece. On your first time back to the centre room, you want to quickly create a crystal bow out of the weapon frame, then attune it. Subsequently, create a new crystal teleport and two vials. If you still have enough, then you can create your armour as well. But if not, don't worry, you can drop it on the floor there and come back to it later when you've got enough crystals. You want to quickly run over to the pump and fill your two vials up, then quickly cook all of your food using a one tech method, then drop it on the floor. Now as you set back out, you can create your potions on the run. After leaving the base for the second time, your aim should be to complete your T3 weapon set. Return back to any high level monsters on the outer ring that you saw before. You should also look out for the packs of three small mobs, since you can often kill these within one hit, and you'll most likely get your second weapon frame from one of the three small monsters. I wouldn't really bother with the bigger ones though, such as the wolf and the unicorn, since they have substantially more health and defense, making them a lot longer to kill. On your search for the T3 weapons, you want to keep your eye out for any fishing spots that you might come across. If you fish 4 fishing spots before, you'll only need to fish 2 more, and if you only got 3, then you'll need 3 more. You'll basically want to hit your 6 node target, as this will mean you'll have 24 fish to take into the final room. Once you've found your T3 weapons of choice, head back to the middle room and finish off your armour. You'll then want to make sure you cook all of your food, because trust me, sometimes I gotta move it raw. Pick up the rest, and get ready for the boss fight. Before we talk about any boss tactics, I just quickly want to brush over this. Whilst you're running around picking up resources and finding T3 weapons, it's important to drop the tools that you no longer need to free up inventory space for more fish. For example, once you've cut your free wood, you no longer need your axe. The same for the pickaxe and the pestle and mortar, once you've ground the two crystal dust needed for your potions. But do not drop the scepter, because for some reason you won't be able to go through any more doors, which is pretty fucking annoying to be honest. Anyway. Onto the boss tactics. The crystalline Hunleth, I'm sorry but I really don't know how to pronounce that name, attacks on a 5 tick cycle. He or she 
does four major attacks or range attacks, then switches, similar to the alchemical hydra. With this in mind, we can set up a 12 second timer, which bleeps on the 12th second. The noise will indicate that we need to change prayer from range or mage. We'll have to start the timer when the fight starts so that it'll be accurate, but this really helps getting your prayer switch down. Alternatively, if you didn't want to have another window open, you could use the rune light metronome feature, setting it to make a noise every 20 ticks. Once again, this would indicate to you that you had to change your prayer from either range to mage or mage to range. In order to speed up the boss fight, we're going to have to deal more damage, since the boss is always protecting from one style or the other. With range being the most powerful, we want to be hitting with range most of the time. There is a way to achieve this, and this is down to the Crystal Hun Lift's defense mechanic. As it will only change its overhead prayer on your 7th attack, you can manipulate this by attacking with a different attack style on the 7th attack. The optimum example of this would be to attack 6 times with your bow, then switch into the staff for the 7th hit, thus making the Hun Lift pray mage then allowing you to carry on DPSing with your bow. With Rigor and a T3 bow, you'll tear through the Hun Lift, making it an easy kill. And that about concludes the video. So, thank you for watching, and I hope these tips helped you. Also, I'd like to say thank you to Brezzy, who's one of my clan mates, who helped me out by giving me some of the footage used in the video, since I couldn't do it because it was too hard for me. <laughs>